I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always had kind of that spirit of building something and testing it and figuring it out. And the latest enterprise for Elena Ciccatelli of Haddonfield, New Jersey, is a self-produced podcast about the gig economy and how you can carve your own profitable path in our supply and demand culture. I always just thought it was so interesting and so empowering to work on a side gig, create one from scratch, or even plug into some of these ready-made business models like a rideshare app. And finally, I kind of got to a point in my work where I felt like my talents and expertise were not being utilized and I'm I'm a very creative person and I decided you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a podcast about side gigging and side hustling. Fittingly, her podcast is called Side Gig Central. And following its launch this summer, Chickatelli has been committed to offering listeners the chance to meet the very influencers of the gig economy. Getting people to tell their war stories, because there are many, and I don't really see the people in the trenches that have their full-time main gig, if you will, and they also have their side gig that they're working on. And I don't really see those stories as much as I would like to. So that's really kind of the the idea behind the podcast is to not only bring practitioners who are in the field, in the trenches, doing the work, but then also having experts like I had a, a financial coach on in episode five, and we talked about what it means to be an independent contractor and how you should be figuring out your finances for this because you're not going to be having withholding taxes on your income you're generating. So it's kind of an amalgamation of the two. It's the practitioner as well as a small business expert. Chikatelli herself first joined the gig economy when she took a corporate sales job with Lyft in 2017. She still works for the rideshare company today, but says it's the lessons she's learned there that inspired her to offer a blueprint for anyone who wants to make their own breaks. I've found that there's so many similarities depending on, it doesn't matter what industry your side gig is, there's so many common threads that like kind of join us all together like this nation of side hustlers. For the uninitiated, Chickatelli offers the many ways you can create a side gig venture. The first one I call is an asset-based side gig. This is meaning that you have to own an actual asset for you to participate in leveraging this side gig. So, for example, asset-based would be renting a room in your house on Airbnb or renting your entire house if you have a vacation home. Toro, it is a car rental platform where you, if you have a car that's idle in your driveway... Can put it on the platform and you can rent it out to folks who perhaps need an Audi S5 for the weekend. Asset based is profitable, sure. They're also limited. Those are definitely side gigs that, unless you plan on being a real estate mogul or a fleet manager, they're probably going to stay a side gig. I really don't see that commonly scaled up. The plug and play option is the most common side gig. Rideshare apps, Uber, Lyft, Via, anything like DoorDash, Grubhub, Tackle, Postmates. The list keeps getting longer and longer for plug and play. But basically, it's a ready-made business model and you're plugging yourself into their technology and you're performing a service for the end user customer. Another potential plug and play platform for those with a creative skill set is Fiverr an Israeli-based online marketplace for freelance services. If you have some graphic design skills, you can go on Fiverr and design logos to your heart's content. And then there's the sweat equity gig. Now, these are very slow to grow. These are not side gigs that are going to generate income for you immediately. It's not an instant gratification side gig. This is like a food truck, and you're working towards building up your customer base, working on your menu and all of your amazing dishes that you will serve on your food truck, a podcast that you're trying to launch, a YouTube channel that you're trying to gain traction with, freelance writer, all of these kind of 
gigs that you can, of course, work on in your spare time, but are going to take time because you're going to have to build a customer base. You could tell he says plug and play might be the most popular, but because the sweat equity gig is the most personally rewarding, more and more people are exploring that gig option. A lot of folks that I've actually interviewed on the podcast are really looking to build something. I had a brand strategist on the show recently. She said something that I think makes perfect sense as to why people are getting into these sweat equity side gigs is because she had said to me, I got so tired of building somebody else's dream. I got tired of building someone else's brand. Tomorrow, in part two of Making Sense of the Side Gig Economy, Elena Ciccatelli offers her tips for creating and sustaining yourself in this one-size-doesn't-fit-all industry. Choose something that you're really passionate about or you're really good at. Andrew Scroy, WDEL, Delaware's News Radio.